Father, your word said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Father, I thank you for your faithfulness and your word is true. I thank you for the privilege right now and opportunity to bring forth what you are saying in these pandemic days. A few days ago, Father, you've given me a vision concerning our leaders. In this vision, I saw four riders on large horses come out of the sea. And they rode on top of the waves onto the shore and up onto a hilltop in the Western District of New Providence. These were the four horsemen from Revelation chapter six. Judgment is upon the land. Judgment is upon my Bahamas. And God is dealing with his church. In the vision I saw a church leader dressed in priestly garments being judged by one of the riders on the horse. And of all of a sudden, the church leader disappeared and another started to walk towards the rider. Another church leader was further off by always, but always walking towards the reader, the rider, sorry, as though approaching coming judgment. God has been gracious to us. The abuse and misuse of spiritual gifts, disobedience, no repentance for wrongdoing, forgetting the reason for being chosen to lead his people, complacency in the church, watering down the gospel, greed, prideful, lovers of themselves rather than the things of God, has become a bad aroma to our God. But remember, God sees all and knows all our hearts. And God chastises those he loves for their own good. But always remember that no chosen spiritual leader will be exempted from his wrath, which is upon the land now. From this chastisement, we need to take time of self-evaluation as leaders or we call shepherds. God defines us as shepherds of his people to identify and repent of our shortcomings. True repentance from the heart is what will change God's wrath. But knowing our God, he always makes a way. His word says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 14, If my people who are called by my name will humble, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. But also says in 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 27 to 29. The wicked King Ahab heard Elijah prophesying judgment against him. And in verse 27 goes on to say, when Ahab heard these words, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and fasted. He lay in sackcloth and went around meekly. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, the Tishbite, in verse 29. Have you noticed how Ahab had humbled himself before him? Because he has humbled himself, I will not bring this disaster in this day. So, church... If we humble ourselves and confess our sin, 
is in 1 John chapter 1, verses 9. It tells us, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. What is God saying to you? God has been a faithful God to Abraham. He has proven himself to the prophet Daniel. He has also proven himself to the prophet Joshua. What is he saying about you? Is it a relationship with God where it should be? Again, God makes a way. And let's take the words of Psalms 51 to heart. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. The word of the Lord is already blessed. And I pray that it ministers to you as you, re you, as you rededicate yourself and your commitment to our Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. I will now pray for leaders around the world. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you today. We thank you that you are a God who hears and answers prayer. We thank you that you're a faithful God, a true God, whose yes is yes and no is no. That every man should be a liar rather than you not being true, Father. For your word is true and correct. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword that cuts to the marrow. Discerning the intentions of the heart. Your word tells us in 1 Timothy 2 to pray for our leaders. So now we bring before you tonight all the leaders of the world, Father. In this time when the world needs leadership, Father, we pray for divine godly leadership. Father, we pray that all these leaders will seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, and everything else will come afterwards. Father, we pray that they will seek that which is in your word about the situations they face, rather than refer to secular knowledge or opinion poll or whatever that they would seek that which is right according to your word. We pray that the leaders of the nations will come together as one and pool their resources and their knowledge to come up with a cure for the virus and the means how to be able to provide on a global basis for all those millions of people who are suffering and will continue to suffer with the unintended consequences of the lockdown as food becomes short and people hunger and starve. Father, we pray for the wisdom of our leaders. We pray for the wisdom of our scientific leaders to continue to research for a vaccine. Father, may the Holy Spirit continue to inspire and illuminate them as they continue this work. May the Holy Spirit give them insight into what should be done to prevent this virus continuing to decimate the populations. Father, we pray for the church leaders as well. This is no longer a time for playing games, but this is a time for the church to get back to the wheel to have a hunger for the souls of people, to realize that once again we are watchmen on the wall and that you require a watchman's duty from us, to warn those who are about to perish. Otherwise, if we don't, then the guilt of the perishing will be on our hands instead of on their own. So, Father, we just pray for the church to awaken. We pray for revival. We pray for true leadership from our leaders, not just the same as yesterday that would go on tomorrow, but we pray for a new revelation from you, for our church leaders, a new revelation for our national leaders, a new revelation for our business and civic leaders, 
as they grapple with trying to overcome all the fallout of the pandemic. We hear of so many people losing their jobs and so many businesses closed, and we pray for the Holy Spirit to bring fresh ideas for new industries that have not even been considered before that will come to life and employ those people who have lost their jobs and recreate wealth that has been lost. Father, we just pray for these things in the name of Jesus, for nothing is impossible with you, Father God. And we just praise you and give you all the glory and the honor. We also pray that these leaders will have an open, teachable spirit to learn and go forward. And we just rebuke this spirit of stubbornness and obstinacy that will prevent the people from benefiting from the resources that are available. And we just pray this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.